This video is going to cover Vert Manager. It's going to cover the ability to pass through an NVMe or an SSD into a virtual machine to allow you to actually install any version of Linux you want without really needing to do anything. It's simple, easy steps. It might be a bit confusing at first, but they all need to be done to meet the end goal, okay? And the first thing we're going to do is head into the boot folder. We're gonna go into the lemon lime or whatever it's called config because this is the newest one. And you might notice that it's just blank. There's nothing really here, okay? And that's because we're gonna to need to add it. Now I'm gonna go check this one just to see what this one is because it might be in here. Let's take a look. Uh, it is not in here either, which is unfortunate. So we're gonna have to go get the command and put it together. Now, I don't know where exactly this generates from, all right? That's one thing I do not know, and I'm gonna delete that file because I don't need it. Okay, so the command that we're gonna be adding into this right here, into the lemon.conf, if you're running that, is this. And it's not letting me, because again, I went to the other screen. So this is it. That will allow you to pass through things, okay? Because some motherboards, they're not, they're not in proper groups, which is going to be a problem. And I'm going to add that to the RC kernel and that kernel as well. So if you hit save, it's done, okay? And the line will go right after this one here. That way it's readable at boot. Now, I probably should go over this a little bit more with you guys, so I'm gonna to try to do that. So, this is a kernel argument. It's mainly used for PCIe pass-through setups, often in virtual environments like KVM and QMU, where you would need to give a virtual machine direct access to hardware like a GPU. Yes, this can help with the GPU pass-through. It basically, your IMMO groups come together right and this will help this artificially separate them into their own individual groups it doesn't always work fully like with usbs stuff like that but it does help a lot now there are risks but 9999.999 percent of the time you'll never run into any of these risks okay this is just a way to reinstall Windows so you don't have to remove any drives or install a Linux distribution without leaving your current one if you have an extra drive. It allows you to do a multitude of testing. It's very easy to do. It's very easy to understand, especially on Cache OS. Now, we would normally need to reboot, but I'm not rebooting right now because we need to move on to the next one. So sudo, use your editor of choice. I'm going to use gedit, Etsy, defaults, up now i don't have any authori authorization protocol which is unfortunate i forgot to put it back let me go grab that you know what we're not going to go grab that instead we're just going to do nano now there's nothing here okay because i don't use grub but in the default grub you would normally have rub command underscore sorry grub underscore command line underscore linux underscore default equals and then at the end of quiet and splash there might be other stuff you'll add this it needs to be within the quotation marks or else it's not going to work and then after this you would regenerate grub now the really cool part is if you're on arch linux you can grab this little guy update grub it's a cool little thing called update grub which will allow you to run the command sudo update grub and then that's done but there's also a grub hook inside of cache os it's not going to automatically hook changes but it, it's better honestly just to grab this okay that will end up doing it just hit enter enter and yes for install and whatever and there you go now for other things like system md boot i'm not going to be able to cover everything in here but if you want to permanently edit that in I have a way to do that. It's on Discord. I don't want to go on there right now because I'm trying to avoid uh, pop-ups and stuff because there's people messaging me, okay? 
So after that's done, of course, we're going to need to reboot. I'm going to go do that. Now look, this is going to seem a little bit overwhelming to you. And if it is, step back, take a breath, pause the video, figure out if you really want to do this or not. I mean, you could just make a Ventoy drive, but this is, this is how I do things. And it also helps to reinstall Windows too if you ever need to get that done. It's just what it is, okay? If you don't like it, that's fine. You're not, you don't have to like everything. So the next part is sudo pacman dash capital S vert manager. Just like that. And we're gonna want you move full, make sure that we have everything. Then we're gonna wanna do this command here cause that will allow us to run another thing. System CTL, enable, okay, dash dash now lib art d and ip tables all right but for this you're going to want to do system ctl again enable now like that that way both commands can run one after another uh, we also have to put this in here as well and so when this is done i'm going to reinstall everything and get a password. Both of those things are activated, ready to go. And that allows you to have your Ethernet working invert manager out of the box when it comes to using Vert Manager at all. Now, as you can see, we're up and running. Ah, Ubuntu 9.04. Delete. Don't ask me again. So I'm gonna delete all these because I'm going to want to show you an actual installation working on an NVMe. So we're going to hit forward, browse, browse local. We're going to want to find an ISO just like this. So Fedora, we're going to choose Fedora 42 forward. We're going to just, I'm going to pop some RAM in on this thing. I always do this, give as much RAM as you can without overdoing it okay forward we're not going to enable storage we are going to customize and we are going to click yes to virtual network okay we're going to choose a uefi because again we're not barbaric and cores are fine memory's fine food allocation is fine that is correct network is up we do not have a tablet but you know i don't want to disable it at the moment we're going to select none on this. Then we're going to go to Virtuoso. That's what I like to call it. And there we go. We're going to add some hardware. Okay. Now, this is sort of advanced. So please stick with me the best that you can. These are all the devices that are exposed in your system. And this is my 500 gig WD drive NVMe. I'm going to hit finish. That has officially been passed through. And what happens next is when we begin the installation, it boots up, start. Now I'm not actually going to fully install this. I just want to show you that it's in there and it's working because again, this is important. Because here's the thing. I'm kind of getting bored of Arch again and being who I am, I'm most likely going to be on Fedora for a little while. You don't have to follow me. This is just what I do. It's just how I was made, I guess. Uh, another thing we could do is if you're in here, I don't know if Nabora has that ability. Okay, it does. Uh, we can full screen the application and have your full res ready to go. It's going to take a second to kick in. Next, next, next. There's the installer. So we're going to enter our names, PC, password, password. Reuse password, okay, and hit next. There's the drive right there. WDC WD uh, S500 gig. It's right there. So it successfully passed through. So again, you could do this with Windows. You could do this with any other distro that you want, and this will work. It saves time, it saves energy, and you're in a safe environment installing things. This also allows you, okay, to, well, 
make a video on the installation of Nibora or something else. If you want to help other people like I've been doing, this is an easy way to do that. If you have the cores to spare, spare them. Help out, teach Linux, make it a safe space, whatever. That's what all those people want now to feel safe, even within an OS. I honestly don't get it. This is more of an adventure for me. I want to I want to jump into the unknown, right? I want to make mistakes. I want the most ridiculous comments imaginable in the bottom. Like, you use the stable version of Gilf OS. Well, maybe if they made it clear that there's two versions on their site instead of just one, which they didn't, I would have been, I would have been running the Roland release instead. It's things like that that are absolutely wild, that are fun. See, and people commenting it over and over again instead of being like, that comment already been made? Oh, I don't care. I want the attention. That guy doesn't get it. It's things like that that make me laugh a little bit, you know? So, I hope you guys learned something from this video. I tried to make it as straightforward as I could. And yes, this means after you're done within the VM, you can literally reboot your entire PC into the drive you installed the OS on. And guess what? It works on real hardware. If you have NVIDIA, well, you're going to have to install the drivers yourself as it's not going to be detected during boot or install. So that's something else to look forward to, I guess. It's always fun to learn new things, huh? I will write up a more complete guide in the Discord, which you guys can check out in the Linux and Tips channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Press the like button to help out with the algorithm. Don't forget to leave a comment and I'll see you guys next time.